this video we're going to take a look at Word Chapter 3 skill based training in my IT lab. We're going to look at the second step because this one seems to be tripping some people up and I just want to make sure that everyone can see exactly what we're trying to do here with this particular piece of this assignment. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to launch just step two of this particular assignment. And keep in mind, while this is launching, you can still take a look at all the different ways to do all of these steps before you click launch. A lot of times you probably go in and you click launch all and you do the entire assignment. But remember, you can always see all of these steps. You can even print them out ahead of time if you want. So now we have our My IT Lab skill-based training simulator launched. The first step we're going to do is we're going to merge all the cells in row 1 of table 1. So all we really need to do here is we need to select all of these cells. So I just left clicked and dragged across all of those cells and that lets Word know that those are the cells that I'm interested in. And I want to merge those cells. This one's going to be under the uh, actually under the layout section of the table tools that appears. Anytime you're working in a particular piece of Word, such as a table in this case, you might get some special options like these table tools in this case. You can go right to the stuff that applies just to that table. And in this one we are going to merge these cells. So you can click on merge. Now notice I didn't even have all the text selected, but I had enough of that box selected that it knew that I wanted to merge those cells. So. Uh, now that those are all merged, um, we can go on to the next piece here. We're going to po position the mouse pointer on the border between the first and second columns. Column 1, column 2, column 3. We want to position the mouse right here so that we get that uh, double-headed arrow. And anytime you see this, this is going to give you the opportunity to uh, move that border between the cells. And in this one, we want to drag the left we want to drag the mouse over to the left to reduce the column width by about one inch. Now it's not asking for exactly one inch here so we're going to kind of take a guess here. We were about at two we want to drop that down to about one here and if we get it right we should see that that clicks in. Now if it says incorrect action you might just try this one a couple more times because sometimes this one doesn't quite click in unless you're within the range that my IT lab is looking for. What I find is since we were just to the left of the two here, it's just to the left of the one to get that to, to click in. Now we're going to select row two as well as all the remaining rows below it in, in table one. Select all of the stuff in row two and all of the rows below it. And we're going to adjust the row height to point three. Now that we've got all these highlighted, anything we do to one of these cells is going to happen to all of them. So here we can just go up and simply change that to point 3, type it in and hit enter, and it should take effect. And now we're going to position the mouse pointer just inside the left edge of the third row of table 1. This would be the third row, and we want to go just inside that edge, and you'll see the mouse starts to point to the right a little bit here. Now this indicates that we're going to make a selection here rather than place the insertion point there. So since my arrow looks like that I can left click and drag down and it should highlight Oops, we, we want to highlight those entire cells. Um, typically that left arrow is used for highlighting rows. Another way you can tackle this one though kind of like when I did the first one. You don't even need to necessarily select all of the text. We just need enough of that text selected so it'll show that we are trying to manipulate these cells. So our objective with this one is we want to split those cells in two columns and five rows. So I've got them selected and I want to split those cells. And this one says that what we really want to do is we want to not merge those cells. We really want to make almost kind of, kind of like another mini column here. So we're not going to merge those cells. We want two columns and then there's going to be five rows. We say OK to that 
and that will take effect. You can see that that happened behind the scenes here. And we've now completed step two of the Word Chapter 3, Skill-Based Training.